Hello, I'm Guilherme Anjos, and I'm the lead designer for Figma to Cute, a plugin that converts Figma designs into CAMEL code for Cute applications. If you have ever handed off a design for an embedded system, you know the gap between what designers create in Figma and what developers need in QML. Let me show you the workflow with Figma to Qt, from a finished design in Figma all the way into working QML code. I have our playground file open. This is Laundry Queue, a washing machine interface. The plugin is already running. You will have access to this same file so you can follow along. Let me walk you through the complete workflow starting with the design itself. So, here's what we are working with. This is a complete interface design with multiple screens for a washing machine. You can see we have various elements here. Text layers, icons, images, Figma components, all with structure with auto layout. These frames are organized to represent the actual screen hierarchy. When this exports to QML, all of these elements translate directly. Text becomes QML text. Images becomes image components. The auto layout structure becomes KML layout. The hierarchy you see here in Figma, that's the hierarchy you get in code. So everything you're designing here has a direct translation to working KML. Now, let me show you something specific about the controls. I want to add a button to this design. So I'm gonna add one here. Notice what happens when I add this button. The plugin recognizes it as a functional control, not just visual element. You can see the properties panel. This is now a QQ controls with all its properties. Let me explain what Qt Quick controls are. They are pre-built interactive UI components that comes with Qt. Things like buttons, switches, checkbox, they are functional out of the box with built-in behavior and interaction states. So what does this mean for this workflow? When you export this button, it won't be just shapes and text that the developer had to wire up manually. It exports an actual cute quick button component. The developer gets a working interactive button that they can use immediately in the application. And that's the difference Qt Quick Controls supports make. Now that we've seen controls work, let's look at how design uses variables. You can see them here in the variables panel. These colors and text styles are defined as variables in Figma. When I export this design, these variables become design tokens in the QML code. So here's the practical benefit. If I change a color variable here in Figma and export again, that color updates everywhere in the code automatically. I don't have to hunt through files to update values. The design system stays synchronized between design and development. All right. With the design elements in place, I want to preview how screens actually look. I'm going to select multiple frames here. Now, I'll open the live preview. Here's what I see. I can navigate between these screens right here in the preview. So, if I'm reviewing this washing machine flow, I can go from one selection screen to the setting screen, to the ongoing washing screen, and I can move through all of them without going back to Figma each time. This makes the review process much faster. Now that I previewed the interface, I want to understand what's happening behind the scenes. Let me open the file tab. This shows me the complete project structure, QML files organized into folders. You've got your main project files, a controls folder, design tokens, and assets. I can filter what I'm looking at. Just QML files, just assets, or others, depending on what I need to focus on. If I need to find something specific in a larger project, there's the search here. While you were looking at a project organization, let's talk about fonts. I want to know which fonts are in the design and whether they are system fonts, Google fonts, or custom fonts. I need to package with the application. 
So let me open the font measurement. Here they are. Every font, whether they are using the design, and I can see clearly which ones are system fonts, which ones are Google fonts, and which ones are custom fonts. If it's a custom font, I know I need to include it with the application. If it's a system or Google, I don't. The interface makes the distinction explicit, so there's no guesswork. We have looked the overall structure. Now, let's get more specific. I want to see how a particular element translates to code. I'll switch to inspect mode. When I select an element in the design, the corresponding code highlights right here. This helps me understand how the design structures become KML structure. It's especially useful when I need to talk with a developer about a specific element and point them to exactly where it is in the code. No confusion, just direct reference. Before we move on, there's one more thing I want to check. How does this design look at the actual device resolution? I'll set to match my target device. Let's put 1024 by 600. Now, the preview shows me an overlay with the actual device dimensions. But just a reminder, this is just for visualization. So I can see exactly how it will look on the hardware. All right, Let everything looks good visually. But before I export, I need to make sure that there are no technical issues. Let me check the issues tab. The issues tab surfaces potential problems that could affect the exported code. This could be things like unsupported effects, elements with proper constraints, or structures that won't translate clean to KML. I have two options here. I can fix the design, which means going back to Figma and adjusting an element, or in some cases, I can render it as an image instead. Let me use the autofix. The plugin fixed automatically by rendering it is as an image. Now, let me refresh this. Good, the issue is resolved. Let me go back to the preview to verify the fix is working correctly. There it is. The element looks right, the issue is gone, and the preview shows the fix. So, the workflow here is design, preview, check for issues, understand what needs to be fixed, fix it, and verify. The Issues tab keeps you from exporting the code that might have problems in the future. Now that everything is clean and verified, I'm ready to export. But first, let me configure a few settings. Asset format. I will use a PNG for this demonstration. And if there are layers that I don't want in the exported code, maybe hidden guide layers or annotation layers, I can skip them using the layer skipping. So I have control over what gets exported without having to change the Figma file structure or delete layers that I might need later. Everything is configured. Now I will export. This downloads a complete KML project, ready to go. From here, a developer can take this project and start working with it immediately. If I want to look at the code myself, I can open it in Qt Creator or Visual Studio Code and see exactly what was generated. So, that's the full process. You design your interface in Figma with all the elements, components, and layouts. Add controls that export functional Qt Creator controls, preview multiple screens, and check that from the device resolution. Manage your files, inspect how design uh, translates into code, fix any issues before export, configure your settings, and then export into KML. You can try this yourself. Install the plugin from the Figma community. The playground file I use here is available there too. If you have any feedback while you're using it, there's a feedback option in the plugin settings. Thank you for watching.